Uh, as you've just seen in that film, uh, and as you've heard all evening, much has been done, but there is much left to do. Indeed, in many areas of our life, the state has grown, and the IEA again needs to challenge established wisdom. It is now widely accepted that the state has no comparative advantage in owning and running the car industry, the telephone and com computer industry, and even travel agents. But it does still seem an article of faith for some that the state is the best provider of health care and even, with respect to our BBC friends here this evening, television broadcaster. It's It's hard to be sanguine about a situation, for example, in which our total welfare bill, including pensions, costs about £10,000 per household per annum in Britain, but in which poverty has not been eliminated. It is, a difficult, it is very difficult not to be furious that in the name of austerity, the government is still living beyond the means of taxpayers to the tune of about £1.5 billion pounds a week. As the famous saying goes, if you can keep your head while all around you are losing theirs, then you probably haven't grasped the gravity of the situation. <laughs> this is in part why we have launched the Paragon Initiative in our Diamond Jubilee year. Not to panic, not to lose our head, but to address these substantial problems. A Paragon is a flawless perfect diamond and that's why we're uh, uh, announcing this initiative in our diamond jubilee year and so over the next few years we will produce research run events and carry out an outreach program to map a way to a britain in which the state does much much less and civil society ordinary men and women have much much more power I have one man in particular to thank for getting this initiative off the ground. Sitting at table four over there is Patrick Barber, who built a small business into two public companies. He brought the concept of this initiative to the IEA, an institute he has generously supported for many years. He is now working with us to turn that concept into reality, and we are enormously grateful, Patrick, for your financial support, your time, and your intellectual inspiration. Thank you very much. Very cleverly in providing his extraordinarily generous financial support, Patrick set us a challenge. For every pound he gives us, we have to match it. So I'll say once again, don't clap, just throw money. In terms of who we want to influence, we want to influence everybody. It was Woodrow Wilson who once famously remarked, a conservative politician is someone who sits and thinks, but mainly just sits. <laughs> but of course, conservative politicians, politicians of all stripes, are often told, don't just sit there, do something. I think we need to actually give opposite advice. Please spend some more time just sitting there and less time doing something. The IEA's role, in part, is to make sure that politicians of all stripes and opinion formers right across society do some real thinking when they find the time to sit, rather than to hurriedly legislate and regulate. And in the importance of thinking about policy and ideas, I'm going to finish by paraphrasing Bertrand Russell. Men fear thinking as they fear nothing else on earth, more than ruin, more even than death. Thinking is subversive and revolutionary, destructive and terrible. Thinking is merciless to privilege, established institutions and comfortable habits. Those who think look into the pit of hell and are not afraid. Thinking is great and swift and free the light of the world, and the chief glory of mankind. Here's to 60 more years of rigorous thinking. 
and of making sure the IEA's thinking changes the world in which we live. Thank you all for coming this evening. Keep the faith. Keep arguing the case. But most of all, keep thinking. Enjoy the rest of your night.